How's it going guys? I'm sure you're excited to watch this video, excited to be let down, but I just want to start off by saying I absolutely love this car, but there are some things, like with any car, uh, there are some things that could be improved upon. So here are eight terrible features about the Mustang Mach-E. Number one on the list is the ground clearance. This car has 5.7 inches of ground clearance. Now to put this into perspective, this is an SUV, right? The regular 2022 Mustang has five inches of ground clearance. So this has 0.7 of an inch more ground clearance than a regular sports car Mustang. Number two on the list of terrible features is the way the front or the, the front hood, um, the way it latches and closes. It is extremely difficult to close the front hood. For some reason, you need two hands and you need to be like really aggressive with it, which can cause some issues. Like if you're too aggressive with it, you know, you can end up denting your beautiful hood on your Mach-E. Number three on the list of terrible features and this one's excusable. I understand why they did it because the narrower your tires are, the better range you're going to get because you're going to have less resistance rolling on the ground. So this car has uh, 225 millimeter uh, tires and they are just, they're, they're very skinny. They're, they're not the best tires, you know, for traction or anything, but they are very efficient because they're, they're really skinny tires. They don't look that great, like the stance of the car, like if you look at it from the front or the back. Um, but I understand why they did it. It is for sakes of efficiency. This is one issue that is pretty easy to fix if you're into modding your car or customizing your car. You swap the tires out and the rims for, you know, a wider set of rims and tires and, you know, your issue is fixed. But from the factory, very skinny tires. It's going to help with range, so if you put wider tires on there, you're gonna, your range is going to go down. But it all depends on you know what you're into. Do you rather the car look better or do you want to get more range? The next feature, which I think is uh, it's pretty bad on this car, is the door sills. So the door sills are massive. And the reason is, is that's where they put the uh, battery pack. They put it underneath the car. But they put it in a way that makes it kind of uh, obvious, you know, like when you open the door, it's like this big fat black thing looking back at, you, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a big uh, battery pack that you know is there. So um, they could have hit it a little better or put a, a different trim piece on there, maybe like split it up. That way it's not as obvious. So you have this big chunk of uh, a battery pack staring back at you when you open the door. Uh, not, not the greatest looking. Um, you know, the other thing with that is that also affects the ground clearance. So because that battery pack is sitting right underneath the uh, car, um, it takes up some of that ground clearance as well. All right, next on the list of terrible features on this car is the volume knob. Now, I like the volume knob. I like that it's an actual volume knob. So in the past, we've had a, a Honda Civic and it had the little... Um, you know like the touch sensor volume thing and that was terrible I hated that so this is much better in regards to it being an actual analog knob and I think they took this from some of the complaints from Tesla's people were saying that they hated having to like use the little scroll button on the steering wheel or like you know go into different places on the screen so here you have you know your hand just gravitates towards the volume knob super easy super simple what I don't like about it is the feel. So it feels cheap, like it's wobbly, and it just, you can press it in, but the pressing it in doesn't actually do anything. I think they could have done a much better quality job. I don't know, some maybe some better metal um, to make the knob, to make it feel more premium. I mean, you're paying for a 50, 60, $70,000 car. It shouldn't feel like a plasticky volume knob out of a really cheap car, um, so. That is, you know, compared to the touchscreen, yes, this is better. It's an improvement. It's an actual knob, but they could have made it feel more premium, you know, better feeling knob. Next on the list is something that 
I don't notice until my knee starts to hurt, but there is this black piano piece of plastic right right against your knee. Um, I used to have a Cadillac SUV and it was like plush leather. You can just lean your knee against it all the time and have zero issues, zero complaints. Here it's a sharp black piano black piece of plastic and you know if you're you know have your legs spread out or you have your knee touching it it gets pretty annoying pretty painful after a while especially if you're going over bumps or anything so I mean it's you can always like rearrange your legs but it's kind of annoying that it's just this hard piece that's there I kind of get why they did it you know with a minimalistic look you know trying to make it look nice and clean and simple um, but you know they could have added some sort of like you know plush leather or plush material that way your knee is isn't banging against that hard plastic all the time next on the list of terrible features is the range now this car they say you get like 220 miles of range um real life we've been getting probably between 200 and 210 for like a 100 percent charge it really just depends on how much we drive you know, if, if we're driving like idiots and flooring it the whole time, uh, one thing that we have noticed on road trips, the range decreases significantly because you're not using any of the regen, you're not using any of that, uh, you know, regenerative braking or anything. So on the highway, the range drops much faster than it actually says it does. Um, so you got to be careful with that if you're taking this car on road trips. I wouldn't really recommend this car for road trips because the charging infrastructure is just not there at all and it can get like um, pretty unreliable with the charging network like there's some chargers that you just you know you have 15 miles of range left and you pull up to this charger and you know there's four chargers and none of them work or they're all down the servers down you know all this stuff so I would not recommend these cars for road trips um, the range is something you know electric cars are newer um, still so technology is gonna be advancing the range is gonna get better I mean look at the uh, <clears throat> you know the the leaf or whatever that had like I don't know 90 100 miles of range so this is definitely an improvement um, but uh, for road trips I would not recommend it because the range is just it's it's annoying to have to charge that many times so yeah that's just one of the uh, more annoying things about the car now the last thing is the regenerative braking the regenerative braking is not very smooth I mean you have to feather the throttle to kind of get that uh that regen but it is not smooth at all if you just take your foot off it'll jolt you you know forward um, from the braking and there's no different adaptable modes like you can't change the amount of regenerative braking there's either on or off so I think that's something maybe they should add in the future is maybe do like a, a lighter regenerative braking that's not as abrupt I would definitely be into that because then when I get into my other Mustang that's you know stick shift it's an older Mustang then I'm like I get into this and it's really hard to get used to the the regen braking again uh, so I honestly just drive without it it's not that big of a deal because this is more of a commuter car we don't take very much road trips with it um, so I don't really use the regen braking I don't like the way it drives I don't like the way it feels so maybe that's something that can be improved upon as well so there you guys have it eight terrible features about the Mustang Mach-E now I say terrible in quotation marks because these are just little things that I'm nitpicking this car is absolutely incredible all the reviews all the raves that it's gotten about it um, this is a great car I mean anybody that drives this car and compares it to any other car will tell you this is a fantastic you know little SUV sporty SUV whatever you want to call it um, but it does have little things that can be improved and fixed and I'm sure Ford will listen to all of the feedback and uh, you know improve on them in the future but there you guys have it the eight terrible features on the Mustang Mach-E